Los Angeles, you probably think movie stars, beaches, and endless shopping. What you don't hear, though, is that this is ground zero of America's homelessness crisis. Los Angeles, the home of some of the most desirable zip codes in the country. But right at the heart of this wealthy metropolis exist conditions that have been described by the city's own newspaper, the Los Angeles Times, as a national disgrace. One expanse of 50 city blocks is an area that's become synonymous with poverty, crime, and homelessness. It's existed for decades and has dogged successive mayoral administrations that have tried to eradicate it. It's called Skid Row. Skid Row literally became a dumping grounds for mental health institutions who would drop off patients right here, knowing that they would be contained. LA has one of the highest rents in the nation. And the reason why I come to so many tents out here is because people can't afford to live in a house. The cost of living here soared over the last decade, forcing thousands onto the street. The irony of Skid Row is that it exists against a backdrop of glittery downtown LA. The area has rapidly developed and gentrified in the last decade. Trendy cafes, high-end lofts, and upscale restaurants have popped up everywhere, and buildings are being converted into luxury housing. All of this is driving up rent prices and making apartments unaffordable. In the past 15 years, the median rent has gone up by 28% in Los Angeles, and the median renter income has gone down by 8%. So you literally have hundreds of thousands of people every month who are struggling to pay the rent. And then when you add in those other factors that are going on in their lives, there's just not a safety net to keep them from ending up on the streets. Skid Row, where most of the rehabilitative services are to try to help the homeless get their lives together. Only problem is, it attracts two kinds of people. Like people who really, really want help because they can't afford it anywhere else. And then you have groups of people who come down and exploit them. We have a lot of people who are here because they suffer from mental illness. Not saying that that's our problem, but I would say 45 to 50% of the population suffers from mental illness. The availability of toilets here is worse than in a UN-run Syrian refugee camp. According to the LA Community Action Network, nearly 1,800 unsheltered people in Skid Row share access to just nine toilets like this one, which means many avoid them altogether and use buckets, which are then emptied into the streets and trash cans. Years ago, we had 27 porta potties in Skid Row. My concern was that they would be taken over by the criminal element. And day one, that's exactly what happened. Uh, when those bathrooms were here, Gangsters were charging the homeless $1 to $5 to use the porta potties for what they were designed for. The authorities know hygiene is an issue here. Street washes like this one have been instituted to help stop the spread of disease. If we don't power wash the streets, we end up with what we had years ago when we had a tuberculosis outbreak or a hepatitis outbreak or some kind of disease. It has to be done. The problem in L.A. is certainly not unique. Um, homelessness is a crisis across the country. And um, what you saw in L.A. is just one example of that. Um, L.A. has very high housing costs, and that really is what is driving 
homelessness there, but that's true of many other cities. And the cost of living has not caught up with the cost of housing, and that's driving homelessness. And um, it, it's a national crisis. It's not being addressed. The majority of people that you see sitting and out there in the streets and sleeping in the streets are mostly out there by choice. They're there because they want to be close to their addiction and drugs, and they wouldn't take housing if you, if you had a mansion waiting for them, they wouldn't take it. The city's definitely not doing enough, the county's not doing enough. Individually, we're not doing enough. Communities aren't doing enough. Skid Row is a 49 square block area, 2,000 people living on the sidewalks in tents and boxes. It's worse than a third world country or a refugee camp right here in LA, one of the richest cities in the, in the world. Living down here, there's not a time where you can be relaxed. And you're always having to be on guard because you never know what's gonna happen. I have not only females trying to fight with me or something, I have men trying to get at me. There is a lot of people who do get raped. Skid Row is no place for families, for children. It's violent. You can't even walk around the block without breathing marijuana smell in the, in the air, uh, drugs being sold on the sidewalks. W worse than that, there are over 300 registered sex offenders in just a few block areas surrounding uh, Union Rescue Mission. It's really hard not having your own home. Thanks. Even something as little as making a midnight snack becomes a privilege you don't have anymore. Come on, boy. Let's go back. Back or back or? Come on. You know, everybody think it's fun down here because you have access to drugs and alcohol and everything, but it's not. I'm 24. I've been in the streets for about five months now. At 18, a guy I was dating told me that I could make more money and move out of my mom's house if I sold my virginity. That's when I got into prostitution. I came out to California about a year ago for a recovery home for that. But the recovery home decided that they just wanted to help uh, drug and alcohol women who were addicted. So they dropped me off in front of the union. Skid Row is the area surrounding the Union Rescue Mission. The first couple of times you see it, it's kind of horrifying. <laughs> the area around here is not safe. We walk our younger siblings to the bus stop because you're safe in a bigger group, so that's what we do. Well, this is my tent, um, the little area I stay in in front of the union. It's where I sleep. And then this is, it's really messy because I couldn't find anything to wear this morning. There's not very many bathrooms here that are open. We use a bucket. Where do you dump? In the street. And really nowhere else too. The mission actually does a lot for me while I'm still outside. Sometimes I do come in to take showers and eat lunch and stuff. Thank you. Hopefully in five years I'll have my own place and um, be in school 
and be able to just start fresh. Why am I stuck here like this? Why am I homeless? Why, why? Sometimes it was really difficult to deal with those thoughts. But I really feel that no matter what, God will take care of me. This phase of homelessness will pass. And one day, I know that I'm gonna be the one helping people here. Like the people here have helped me and my family. I'm gonna be the one giving out the helping hand. Hi, Elena. Hey, Brandy. How are you? Good. Good. What's going on? Not much. So as far as your housing, because you're still right here, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't want to come in? At least do a cot? So you're not on the streets? Um, sure. I know you take showers and stuff in here. Um, I know you're eating in here. You know, you're doing all kinds of other things in here. So I know if you need anything else, you can always come to me. You can always come in here, okay? Give me a hug. Okay, all right. My goal overall is I'd like there to be no one living on the sidewalks of Skid Row. It sounds impossible, but New York almost does it. They get 96% of the people off the streets, and they're embarrassed about the 4% that are on the streets. In LA, we have a roof over 25%, and we're not embarrassed enough yet about the 75% on the streets. My hope is that we have a change of heart in LA, and we all work together to make sure not one precious human being is suffering on the sidewalks. I've learned a lot about life. It's not so much what you've been through, but it's how you respond. I can get better than this. There's so many different circumstances that can cause homelessness. You really can't stereotype it. You really can't. 